Lineal heavyweight champion of the world. The undefeated. The trash talking and mind games genius. You're not ready, Dawson, are you? Falling to the darkest of depths and rising to claim the hearts of the nation. You've been born. This is the real history of the one and only. The Gypsy King. Tyson Fuel. That's what you call a succulent breast. <laughs> Born Tyson Luke Fury on the 12th of August 1988. Tyson was three months premature and weighed an incredible one pound. Raised in the style area of Cheshire, he is the son of parents Amber and John Fury, a travelling family with Irish descent. His mother is a private lady who has stayed away from the limelight in wake of her son's stardom, much like his father John, a quiet man who usually avoids confrontation and keeps his views mostly to himself. Change your life now! The saviour has arrived! I'm gonna shut your f***ing jaw! You can't be me! Let's get it on! Um, well, sort of, anyway. Tyson was named after the legendary Iron Mike Tyson, stemming from Big John's love of boxing. Pop, pop, bang! He had no real interest in school and dropped out aged 11, going off to work with his dad and brothers Tarmac in Rhodes. Now the Fury bloodline is that of pure gypsy fighting men, with one of their distant relatives being the infamous Bartley Gorman, a British bare knuckle fighting champion and the original king of the gypsies. This bloke was so hard that if you came home and found him in bed with your missus, you'd say, Bartley, me old son, what would you like for breakfast in the morning? The violence is a firm part of their heritage and a bare knuckle brawl to settle the scores is considered the norm. Which is why when Tyson and Big John Tarmac this road, the council said, fucking blinding job, Mr. Fury, how much do we owe you? As a young teenager, Tyson was first introduced to fighting through boxing training with his father, who had just retired from his own professional career in the ring. Unfortunately, Big John's endeavours in boxing were not very fruitful, but I'm sure he won't mind me saying that. If he does mind me saying that, then please let him know I've moved to Nigeria and I'm living in witness protection. However, it was bare knuckle where John was a real force of nature, competing in hundreds of bouts. He is quoted as saying fights were usually over within seconds. I would not stop swinging until they were out cold. And I made use of everything to me. Like what? Feet, elbows, head, teeth. Teeth? Fuck me. Ah well, whatever tickles your pickle, Jono. Tyson was learning his craft. The sweet science as well as the fury grit was installed from an early age. He was a shy character till his later teenage years when he had grown taller than all his friends. At just 14 years old, Tyson was six foot five and had found a huge surge of confidence in his fighting skills. Word was spreading of his naturally gifted talent. The boy was becoming a man. He began to compete on the amateur circuit at the age of 18, representing both England and Ireland. He forged a successful, if not rocky, amateur career ranking number three in the world, but was always slightly overshadowed by the great David Price, who along with the entertaining Mr. Fury, also turned out to be one entertaining fucker. Albeit in slightly different ways, Fury was obviously good at talking a load of smack and Pricey was good at taking a smack from people like Putin's boyfriend here. Big up the Price Meister. He went on to win the ABA Super Heavyweight title in 2008 and after being snubbed by the GB team for the Olympics in favour of Pricey, he said bollocks to the amateur game. He turned professional and was about to cause some John Claude Van damage. Hello, hello, hello. The professional journey began with the little French bulldog Mick Hennessy. He took the leap of faith and signed Tyson with his first bout on the undercard of Home Alone Mar vs Pascal. Fury showed no nerves in the debut even when being faced against the ferocious Bella Guillon Gus Belga Belga This man and he dismantled the journeyman in just over two minutes. Fury hit the ground running blasting away all of his first seven opponents by knockout or making them quit. Mick's tail was wagging like a good un. He knew he had a new sensation on his hands, albeit still a bit inexperienced since he nearly knocked his own block off in his full fight against Lee Swaby. Bosh. However, the run nearly came to an unexpected halt. 
An off night for Tyson against the experienced John McDermott ended with a controversial points decision win, but fans were not best pleased. The Free Sky commentators even said they think they've mixed up the name, saying that Fury was completely scored. Now there is actually a lot of history behind this fight, so here we go. Terry O'Connor was the referee and the only man scoring this belt. McDermott had insisted in negotiations that O'Connor should not referee, so Richie Davies was brought in, but minutes before the fight, he was taken ill. John's reasons for this were, every fight that he had with O'Connor refereeing, he had actually lost the fight, and also that in O'Connor's boxing days, he was actually knocked out by McDermott's dad. Yeah, so there you go. Uncle Proper spitting some lyrical facts, not just a bell-end YouTuber. Here's some behind the scenes of me doing my research. Another cheeky fact is that McDermott's promoter Frank Maloney actually had a heart attack on this night, but luckily he was all okay. Sorry, she was all okay. Yes. So much respect to the big man. Girl, woman, gender neutral. Fuck me, sorry. Anyway, Fury faced John in a rematch and knocked fuck out of him. So there we are, let's move on. Another three victories and Fury found himself in the presence of British boxing royalty. The table lobbing nuttier than a fruitcake, Del Boy Chisora was an unbeaten powerhouse that was tipped to dethrone the Gypsy King. A spicy build-up ensued, with the world stage finally getting a taste of Fury's epic mouthpiece. I'm Tyson Fury, I'm the best ever on the planet. This city is getting knocked back out, and I'm sick to death of this. This motherfucker is going to sleep. <laughs> Hang on a minute. The baddest man. Ah, so there we are. It's all making perfect sense. Chisora learnt from the best. But then again, if you are going to call him a minge, then tables are bloody likely to go flying anyway. Fucking minge. In the end, the Fury doubters were all proved wrong, and he picked up his first major titles, the British and Commonwealth heavyweight titles. The train continued rolling for another five victories, and then he found himself against the hard-hitting American Steve Cunningham at the Madison Square Garden. Put on his arse in round two, he went on to knock out Cunningham with a cheeky little forearm block, and the eight people in the crowd went wild. Tyson was now on the verge of world titles. A fight was set with the legendary British heavyweight David Hay, but two injuries for Hay postponed the fight that in the end was cancelled. If I had a quid every time this muppet was injured, I'd be buying houses next to this helmet. Anyway, three more victories including another encounter with Mr. Table Lobber, which was actually the worst fight I've ever fucking seen. And then the time had come. The former pound for pound king, the dominant force in the heavyweight division and longest reigning heavyweight titles holder, Dr. Steelhammer himself. All the belts on the line, the most decorated champion of his time and with the Furies thankful for the opportunity, they gave the Klitschko's their utmost respect. <laughs> Uh, no, sorry, I got that wrong. They got on about as well as James Corden and a friggin' diet. The tensions were high and Tyson drew Vlad into some ferocious mind games. The controversy surrounding the gloves, the complaints of the canvas, all was eventually resolved and the stage was set for the biggest night of the Gypsy King's career. Travelling to Dusseldorf to try and dethrone the King with the UK behind him, the world tuned in for a battle of heavyweight warriors, and somebody was surely about to get knocked spark out. Uh, well, apparently not. The fight reminded me of my schoolboy days when I got invited backstage after an episode of Jim Will Fix It. A lot of cuddling and hands tied behind me back. But Fury was victorious. The new king of the division. The lineal heavyweight champion of the world. Fuck knows what lineal means. But either way, the new face of boxing. All his dreams achieved. His father, John, was elated but remained ever humble. Get up! Get up and bang! You come down to my son of the audience. That's what you've got to do. Give him a bow. Because you'll never see him again ever. And appreciate what you're seeing. The Fury childhood dreams were that of reality. But the reality was not what he expected. Tyson fell into a dark place physically and mentally. And some rocky years ensued. But like the true champion he is, he emerged from his lowest just as his name suggests. With Fury. He picked himself up with the help of God, pictured here, and also the other God he has faith in, pictured here. 
But all jokes aside, I know he gets some stick, but big up Ben Davidson for all his help, and big up the big man Fury for his incredible revival. And after some soul-searching years, he was back. Now on a lighter note, let's end the fairy tale with this absolute freaking tuna. The world was overjoyed to see the return of the Mac. Two refresher fights to show his skills were still firmly intact, and then the fight that everybody said was too soon. The ferocious iron-fisted machine that had knocked out nearly every opponent he had faced till this day. To this day! I'll just give it a rest. Deontay saw Fury as a walkover, a man past his best. Very few gave Fury even a hope. Tyson Fury is gonna get knocked back to the UK and it's gonna be over. And I mean, how do you even prepare for a fight of this magnitude? I'm um, masturbating seven times a day. The rivalry of epic proportions was born. Deontay's head mashed to pieces by the genius Fury mind games and the build up was textbook Tyson. Completely scored by a man who was considered finished a year prior. Deontay had no answers, till the punch that was heard around the world finally landed. And that connected by Wilder. Oh, that goes Fury! Oh, my but Fury said, nah, fuck that. He rose quicker than my two inches when I get a notification for a new episode of Fake Taxi. Alright love, where do you want to go? Finishing in style. Wilder knew then and there this man was a different breed. The scorecards scream robbery, but either way, Fury had won the hearts of the world. I should have won that fight tonight and the world knows the truth, but it's what it is. The young gypsy warrior was now a sensation. The praise that he should have originally received for beating Klitschko he received unconventionally this time around. He was everywhere. Tyson Fury is a real fighting man who doesn't care about money. However, he did have a little dabble in WWE, which is fake fighting for a shitload of money. But a man's gotta do what he's gotta do. The world was desperate for the rematch to close the chapter. A change in camp was called for, and with a new style, the Gypsy King promised fireworks. Nobody believed what he was predicting, but the time had come. Viva Las Vegas, and Viva Las Fury. The Gypsy King once again done what he had done his whole career. Proved the doubters wrong. The fairy tale ending had come true. Unfortunately though, me and the boxing world all agree that if Wilder's costume was not so heavy, Deontay would have probably won this fight easy. Having to walk 30 yards in a 3 kilogram costume as a 6 foot 7 inch muscular man is something I really wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. I mean, I really felt for him that day. Anyway, Fury said, ah oh, fuck it, let's do it again. Bosh! Another victory put the whole saga to bed. This is the Gypsy King, and this is his story. The man is an ambassador and inspiration for the masses of sufferers of mental health. A role model and a legend of this fine sport. God bless this man, and God bless his boxing. We bloody love him. Big up the fury and big up yourselves for watching. Like and subscribe. Bosh! <laughs>